This video is sponsored by BetterHelp. So over the last couple of weeks, I've been working on my dream office build. If you've been following along, I've done the electrical, the drywall, wallpaper, wainscoting, put finish on the wainscoting, and now it's time to work on furniture. One of my goals for this office is to use a whole bunch of the material that I already have on hand in the shop. And one of the things that I need as a piece of furniture in there is a base for my glow forge. I just got a glow forge, super excited about it. It's gonna live in the office, need storage for all the flat materials that go in there. So I found this flat file that I've had for years. I bought it off of Craigslist. It's almost the right size. It's about 10 inches deeper than will fit in the room. And it's also incredibly ugly. So I'm basically just gonna take a saw to this thing and see what happens. Not remember the last time I opened these drawers. There's so much stuff in here. There's a bunch of junk, but there's a lot of good stuff too. I've got all my old sketchbooks in here. I've got a newspaper article I was in from an art show from years ago. Got the one and only medal I got from the one and only half marathon I ran. I've got a signed one dollar bill from Willie Nelson. That's pretty cool. And a whole bunch of posters and old artwork of mine. That's really cool to go through. It's funny, I've had this flat file for like 10 years and I've always thought it's incredibly ugly and I haven't done anything about it. I honestly don't know why because this is a pretty easy process. I mean, this t ugly, ugly tea molding came off super quick. It's not glued in or anything. It's just kind of a press fit. And you know, little details like that are easy to fix. So uh, I'm happy I'm tackling this. I'm happy I'm giving this thing a new life. I also wanna encourage people who are getting into woodworking, upcycling is a great way to start. You find things on the side of the road or buy them on Craigslist and you just kinda rebuild them in the way that you want. It's a really fun process and you don't really have to do a lot of design work beforehand, not a lot of measuring involved. Uh, and then you also kind of learn how furniture is built by doing that. A lot of my early pieces were upcycled from things that I found on the side of the road. So I don't really, like I said, I don't really have a design in mind. I'm just kind of reacting to this. The main thing that I know that I need is for this to be shorter so i'm cutting the back off of it making sure to cut all the way through the runners that are on the inside and being careful not to destroy it in the process do you want to be a part of the ad you're my emotional support animal which seems perfect for this ad right winston all right ready Thanks to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. If you think you might be feeling depressed, stressed, anxious, or overwhelmed, BetterHelp is here to help. I personally go through all of those feelings at times, working for myself and feeling the weight of that on my shoulders definitely has some mental challenges. I found that talking to a professional rather than a close friend or family member allows me to see things from a different perspective. BetterHelp offers licensed therapists who are trained to listen and help you. You talk to your therapist in a private online environment at your convenience. There's a broad range of expertise in BetterHelp's 20,000 plus therapist network that gives you access to help that otherwise might not be available in your area. You're heavy. I might put you down. You just fill out a questionnaire to help assess your specific needs and you're matched with your therapist in under 48 hours. Then you schedule secure video and phone sessions, plus you can exchange unlimited messages and everything you share is confidential. You could also request a new therapist at any time with no additional charge. One thing that I've learned from my BetterHelp therapist, Paul, is to look at what I ask myself to do in a day and think about whether or not I would put that kind of pressure on another person to get that same job done. The answer is usually no, and I'm currently building a support network here at OMFAB so that I can give myself some much needed mental health breaks. Join the two million plus people who have taken charge of their mental health with an experienced BetterHelp therapist. 
therapist. Get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash Michael Ohm. Thanks, BetterHelp. Now back to the build. Right, Winston? Let's get to it. Now that the cabinet was the right size, I could attach a quarter inch back panel to it using some glue and staples. I was really curious to see what I could get out of this top if sanding it would make it look any better, but I'll be honest, this plywood was pretty crappy. So while I considered different ways to improve it, I started working on the drawers. This technique may look a little bit sketchy. I feel pretty comfortable just being experienced with the table saw. You could definitely do this with a track saw as well. I made sure to double check for nails and I also didn't cut through the full height of the drawer. That way it, it stayed together and then I could just clean it up afterwards with a pull saw. <laughs> fronts I found this scrap piece of walnut plywood probably left over from the Murphy bed build years ago. This was the perfect height that I had enough room to cut all of the drawers out of and it also had enough width. I just had to cut it down slightly and then add the rabbits that were in the original joinery for the old drawer fronts. <laughs> The cool thing about making this all out of one piece of plywood is that I can then grain match the cabinet so it'll be consistent across the whole front. The only thing about that is I have to pay attention to which drawers are which, so I'm being pretty cautious here to keep it in the same original order. The drawer fronts also need a slot cut into them for the bottom to insert into, and I just used the original drawer front to measure that out on my table saw. This took multiple passes. It took two passes on each drawer front to get the slot wide enough. But as you're gonna see in a second, I probably should have gone for a third pass through because the first one was a little tight. Explain to me why you're not going in. What? Okay, we're flipping it over. Doing it the different way. What I probably should have done was stop and recut that joint, but since it was completely covered in glue, I decided to just drive it home with a hammer. It's a tight fit, but it's going. I got this one on, but I definitely needed to recut the rest. And fortunately, the second batch went a lot smoother than the first. I used my Rockler Surefoot bar clamps to hold them in place and then nailed them off. While the drawers were drying, I started working on the trim. And this is just a piece of quarter inch walnut that I'm using a table edge bit that I got from Rockler. And it makes kind of this oblong round over, which I really like. To cut the miters on the trim, I use my picture frame sled. I don't just use it for picture frames. It's actually handy for a lot of different things in the shop. I've got uh, plans available for this sled on my website. So all this trim is going to be used to cover up what was that T molding before. And I love hardwood edge banding on, on plywood furniture. I just think it takes it to another level. It's super easy to do. This walnut was basically scrap anyway. And just that little bit of extra effort can make a piece look a thousand times better. If you're curious about the nailer I'm using, it's a 23 gauge nailer. I like using this for trim because the nail heads are basically invisible. 
the hardest part of attaching this edge banding was to meet the front frame with the sort of top edge banding, but a little bit of time with the sander. I only had to do this on two pieces, so I just eyeballed it and did it by hand and slowly snuck up on it. notice this cabinet is covered in scars and there's areas where the plywood is torn out so I decided to bondo this the surface of it to get it nice and consistent bondo is usually used as an auto body filler but it actually makes a great filler for woods especially if you're veneering or painting over the top of it it's a two-part mix you mix it up until it's the same color as your squeegee thing I got close enough and then it dries super fast. So you have to work pretty quick. I had to mix up, I think three batches to fill all the sections that I needed. So uh, I didn't mix up a whole lot at a time. But the nice thing about it is you can almost immediately start sanding it. And once it's sanded, it's ready for paint or whatever finish you're applying. I considered veneering this cabinet and it would probably look amazing veneered, but I didn't have enough veneer. So uh, I decided to just go with paint. This is a quick and easy solution. And honestly, I think it came out awesome. So I went with iron-on edge banding for the inside of the drawers and probably know if you've watched this channel that I'm not the biggest fan of iron-on edge banding, but there's certain situations where it's just a must. These drawers don't have a lot of thickness to them. I'm also trying to grain match them on the front. So sometimes it is the best solution. You just have to make sure that the edges are super clean so that it adheres well. And you also want to be careful with how you cut it. And I've got some tips on how you can do that better. All right, quick tip, if you are gonna be cutting this stuff, uh, there is a, a better direction to cut it in. So in this case, I'm gonna to wanna to cut it this way and not this way, because you can see the grain cuts across here. If I were to cut this way, I'm gonna peel this grain out and it's just gonna kinda of splinter off as I go down. And then on the opposite side, I'm basically gonna be cutting in the opposite direction because the grain is going this way and you don't wanna peel the grain out. So I'm gonna be cutting that way. So that way on this side, this way on this side, and there is a good chance that the grain will change directions as you go across the piece. So just keep paying attention to it. If it starts to peel out, reverse the blade and cut from the other side. Now it's obviously a good idea if you're gonna try this to practice a few times. They do make tools to cut the edge banding, uh, which which do work. And if that's the way you wanna go, uh, you can. I just always lose them, so I end up using the knives that I have in the shop. So even though this cabinet's not done, I'm gonna start building up layers of finish pretty early. So I cleaned it off, I'm using General Finishes armor seal for this. I know it looks really good on walnut and I have a can that I need to use up anyway. This uh, all worked great except for I made one miscalculation. I decided to apply it to the paint and um, I know that water-based polyurethane works great on this. I should have done a test but I was moving fast and I made a quick decision and went for it and I paid the price. So I have a little bit of a problem here. Uh, the top is still tacky. All the parts with the paint is not dry yet and I don't think it's going to dry. Uh, it's already been like 12 to 15 hours and uh, it should be dry within eight. 
So <laughs> my options are, uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'll probably finish the walnut sections because I, that's the reason I chose the oil-based finish. And then after that, I'll sand all of this back and uh, repaint, maybe apply a water-based top coat over that because I know that'll be fine with the acrylic paint. Carrying on, I went ahead and knocked back the finish with 320 grit sandpaper and applied more coats. I repeated this over and over again over the course of several days. The original flat file is not tall enough to put the Glowforge at working height if it's set on the floor. So I decided to build a plywood box underneath it to get it up to that height. The cool thing about this is it actually allows me to add more drawers to this cabinet and some deeper drawers so I can store some of the Glowforge parts that it comes with and some other odds and ends. To assemble a box, I went with dominoes. You could just as easily go with pocket holes, but the domino joiner is super fast. I have a Glowforge with a pass-through in it, so it's really important that I have this thing on wheels so that I can maneuver it around. And then I also needed to add some paint so that it matched the upper cabinet. And with that, the carcass is done and I can move on to the lower drawers. I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail on the drawers here. A couple months back, I made a video on the basics of drawer building, the different techniques that I use in my shop, and I go through a bunch of tips and tricks in there. So if you're interested in taking a deep dive into drawer making, go check that video out. With all drawer parts milled up, I can start in on the assembly. This goes together pretty easily. It's a half lap joint with a floating bottom panel in it. In fact, it's actually built really similarly to the drawers that were in the existing cabinet. And speaking of which, I'm considering putting together a set of plans uh, if you do want to build this whole cabinet and base from scratch. So let me know in the comments down below if you're interested in, in picking up a set of plans. And if I get enough responses, I'll put one together. To keep things simple, I went with metal side mounted drawer slides that are soft close. I like to mount these using a spacer block underneath it. It doesn't really matter how tall the spacer block is, just as long as it's consistent between each slide so that they're all the same height. I also used a couple three quarter inch spacers so that I could bring the drawer box up a little bit so it doesn't drag on the bottom. After that, I can screw in the slides into the pre-drilled holes in the sides of them. Some of those holes are so far back that you actually have to remove the drawer to get to them. With the drawer boxes fitted, I can start working on the drawer fronts. I'm using some of that rounded over edge banding that I made before to do the sides and iron on edge banding for the tops and bottoms. It was super easy to attach the drawer fronts to the drawer boxes. I just clamped them on and screwed them in from the inside.
After that, I applied several coats of finish to the drawer fronts. After I got all the coats of finish on the main cabinet, I went back over that sticky top with the sander and then added some more paint. I had to remask it, it really wasn't that big of a deal. And ultimately, I think this paint is strong enough that it, it doesn't need a top coat. Cheaper latex paints sometimes will peel up, so a lot of times I will put like a water-based polyurethane over it. But this is a pretty expensive, nice acrylic paint, so I think it's gonna be just fine. So this cabinet is super heavy and I wanted to make sure that I'm, I can disassemble it so when I move it into the other room, it's easy to do on my own. I decided to just screw in the top to the bottom and I'll remove those screws when I go to install it. Now that I have all the parts assembled, I can start adding in drawer poles. I want these to line up all the way down so it looks nice and consistent. I started with the bottom ones and worked my way up and used a T-square to align each drawer pole. It was a little bit of a tedious process. I had to go one after another and just gently pull them out. I had a little marker of blue tape to hold them in place. The reason I did this rather than measuring is because these drawers are, I mean, they're used, they've been through a lot. They don't fit perfectly, I'll admit. Uh, they fit well enough, but um, it's not consistent. The gaps on the sides are not necessarily consistent. So I felt like this was the best way to, to do it and get the nicest results. I took the cabinet apart and reassembled it in the office. And now I can finally install my Glowforge. I've been waiting for this for like a month and a half. It's been sitting in a box and it's been killing me because I just want to play with this thing. Uh, it's nice to have the perfect home for it that's set up with loads of drawer space. So as I acquire materials for it, I've got a place to store everything. And don't worry, I am gonna be doing a full video on Glowforge. Let me know in the comments down below if there's certain materials you wanna see me try, if there's uh, certain projects you wanna see me tackle with the, with the laser. I've already got a couple in mind, but I would love your suggestions so that I can do a complete review video on it. But I wouldn't feel right finishing this video without doing something on the Glowforge, so I'm gonna make some labels for these drawer fronts. I found these brass labels on the Rockler website and I double stick taped the back of them so that I could hold them in place before adding the nails. The nails are super small so I found holding them with a pair of needle nose pliers and then using a nail set to drive them home was the best way to get them in. I made up a couple labels in Adobe Illustrator and cut them out on the Glowforge. Well, I will be the first to admit that I didn't expect this to come out looking this good. When I started with this thing, I was like, I don't know. I don't know if it's gonna work out, but I am really happy with that, especially considering everything was done with stuff I already had on hand. The only thing that I bought were handles, labels, and well, I bought the 
Glowforge. Uh, speaking of the Glowforge, I have a discount code for Glowforge, a uh, pretty big discount if you want to check out the link down below. Uh, also, I will be doing a full overview of the Glowforge, so if you want to wait until I put that video out, you can, you can do that as well. Um, super excited. I've been testing it out for, for several days now and made some really cool stuff. Can't wait to share that with you guys. I also have built a full playlist, which will be somewhere right around here, uh, that you can check out the full office build series, which continues. My next video will be on something in here as well. So big thank you to the sponsor of this week's video, which is BetterHelp. And uh, as always, a big thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys are the best, and I'll catch you on the next one.